previously on Illusion of Gaia. Bonfire. Welcome back to Nathan Plays Illusion of Gaia. I am Nathan, and as always, this is Illusion of Gaia on the Super Nintendo. Um, let's see, where were we last time? We were lost at sea for a while, we got scurvy, which was pretty exciting in its own way, and now we're going to dive right back in. We found the city of Phrygia, and uh, just uh, we're looking around, casting around desperately for some place to save our games, because the video had just gotten quite long enough. Well, today's video is a little bit shorter than average, and you'll see why in a little while. So, back in this uh, derelict house, we head out into the rest of the town. I decided I'd go check on what my friends were doing first. Uh, actually, first first, I was going to talk to these creepy dudes in the robes. Have I seen their missing laborer? No, I'm afraid not. Well, I should let them know. Yeah, I'll do that. A life lived honestly. A life full of laughter. Who are you talking to? What are you talking about? Maybe these mysteries will be revealed. Maybe. So anyway, I decided I would head back to the hotel and see what my uh, friends were up to. Um, last time I avoided talking to them because I, was, uh, I didn't want to trigger any more plot stuff and waste even more time. And it turns out they actually don't have that much to say. Eric has been missing since last night. Uh, I guess he was here as well. Kara is glad everyone is safe, but... But what? I don't know. And Lance uh, says he doesn't know who he is. He doesn't even realize that he doesn't know who he is. And if he doesn't know who he is, how did he get here? Well, those two things aren't... You know, if you don't remember who you are, it, it stands to reason that you wouldn't remember how you got here either. From there, I decided to look around the town a little bit, talk to some of the more interesting characters. This guy claims that a tornado has not gone through his house, though I'm not so sure. Oh, what were you guys doing? Hey now, she claims that he had something in his eye. Well, I don't know about that. And he says, uh, she was just helping me. <laughs> oh, you crazy kids. Don't think I'm fooled for even a moment. And in fact, if you head outside and uh, walk up around the corner here, you can see that they're back at it in the window. Oh, kids today. Anyway, exploring around the town some more, I came across uh, who I rightly assumed to be the Jeweler Gem, controller of the Seven Seas, and this time I voluntarily handed over my red jewels. Uh, they were taking up uh, some space in my inventory, and now that I've collected more than three, actually exactly three, I get the herb. Good for me. Um, from here, you can actually hop down, and it's kind of interesting. You talk to this guy who's standing here. I was startled. Something dropped from the ceiling. Someone, rather. Thanks for showing me that impressive dive. I'll give you something. Slap. <laughs> and then he yells at you for doing dangerous stuff. Certainly did not see that coming. Heading back to the back end of town there, this uh, man keeps slamming the door shut on me, and if he tells me if I value my life, I should get out of there. Also, uh, here's, a, here's a colorful character waiting to talk to you. No one can put on a show like I can. Have a look. First he sets you on fire, and then he sets himself on fire, and then he runs away. Fantastic. Welcome to Phrygia, everybody. An amazing city to be sure. Um, moving on, I uh, talked to this guy, who was quite mean to me, and wandered into this building, which turns out to be a labor camp. We're getting kind of dark here on uh, Illusion of Gaia today, just for, just for kicks. We're going to take our children's game into the matters of uh, ethics and... Ethics of animal slaughter and, um, you know, scurvy, malnutrition, and now slavery. These guys are pretty depressing as expected. But you can climb up to the top of the building and hop down just behind the guy who won't let you pass. Uh, from there you can climb onto some other buildings and talk to different people. Uh, this lady here um, mentions the man who was working at the hotel who was captured by slave traders. Perhaps Eric? And this... There was nothing he could do about being found. Who? He's the laborer who ran away yesterday. Wait, that guy? I should tell the labor traders. I was prepared for the worst. So, so you have told them already? Please don't tell. I don't care about myself. I just don't want to get him in trouble. Who? See, one little problem I have with uh, Phrygia is that the writing gets kind of baffling around here. It's, it's like it's in English, but 
past and future and present tense seem to switch around at will and yeah you never uh, quite know from some of these conversations who they're talking to or exactly what they're talking about it seems like it's for a purpose but it's not in any case here's the labor market oh good i found it when i think of myself in your position i shudder but it's hard enough taking care of myself yeah i'm um, okay these laborers are the same age as you. Remember, there are people everywhere who live this way. That's a lesson to you all. Your fun, lighthearted Super Nintendo game comes packed with lessons about slavery. This guy doesn't want to let me through unless he's like, Oh, did you actually come here to buy a slave? And I said, um, sure, I guess. So he lets me back there to talk to them. Um, a little bit, uh, a few of them talk about their uh, home country and, and life back there. I guess, and apparently uh, it had become harder and harder to find anything to eat and so on. And they had no choice but to become laborers, slaves, I guess. Maybe maybe that's a translation euphemism. And this guy, oh, it's Sam. Remember Sam? He found his message while we were on the raft last time. Hi, Sam. I found you. Anyway, Sam tells us about Eric and says he's being held on the corner of a back street in town. Oh, I think I know just the place. So I ran back there. The door slams in my face again. But this time, when you knock on it, is a man called Eric there. Well, yeah, I mean, we're kids, really, but man is overselling it. Oh, that sounds like Eric inside. Bonk. Oof. Sorry, Eric. The man tells him to shut up, and I decide to break down the door with a flute because that makes sense inside Eric is alone and he's amazed that I've come to rescue him I really didn't think I could break down the door either Eric I'll be perfectly honest with you and he talks a little more about how he tried to save some of the other slaves but he was busted and uh, many of the slaves have been sent to work in a diamond mine he'll tell me where and I learned the location of the diamond mine so we're taking a little break from our trip around the world uh, you know, collecting mystical statues and so on to uh, go free some slaves from a diamond mine. I thought I would head back to the hotel one more time just to see if anybody had anything else to say about their friend Eric being back. And uh, once again, it turns out they really don't. Um, so, except Eric himself, who's obviously new. It's good to be among friends again. If only I wasn't so sad. My tears have all been cried. Wow, Eric. You are a downer, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the diamond mines. Much as I want to just quit again. Nah, not really. I'm in it now. You know what? I'm in it. It's fine. Some kind of herky-jerky travel movements there, and we find ourselves at the Diamond Mine. The Diamond Mine was quiet as a tomb. A chill ran down Will's spine, he said to himself, when he heard the screams from the back of the cave. Also, when he noticed the giant frickin' muscular lizard men patrolling the area. That would send a bit of a chill down my spine, don't you think? Fortunately, they can be beaten to death with a flute as can most things in this game. Another new enemy type is this thing that pops out of the floor and shoots seeker bullets at you that are rather annoying. But if you get in there early and start mashing the button, you'll be fine. Uh, one thing I discovered pretty early on about these lizard men is that their whip hurts. It takes two full spots of health to get whacked by one of those things, so it's not really something you want to do very often. Fortunately, I got a health up there, so uh, that'll allow me to press forward. And I do have a good cache of herbs in my back pocket. Over here, I found the elevator entrance. I suppose we'll come back to that later. And uh, my first corpse. Ooh, spooky. But they can't be interacted with. And hello, who is this? I beg you, cut this chain. So I do, with my flute, again. Speaking to him again. He reveals that there are eight laborers, including him in this camp, and he wishes to be saved. Well, why not? One of eight. There we go. Moving on. Here I discovered another new enemy type. This is, uh, I'm going to start calling them Beholders, because they resemble uh, Beholders from Dungeons & Dragons. Except they also have a bit of a laser attack there. 
And uh, one other interesting behavior um, is that they can occasionally turn to stone for a couple of seconds in which they are invulnerable, but really you just wait for them to turn back and just keep going. Uh, there was quite a battle situation back here as I encountered slave number two. I had to dodge some bullets there, but it all turned out okay. Free this fella, and as a reward, he tells me something. The mine has a secret room. Its entrance blends into the wall. But you can find it by watching for wind through the cracks. Apparently it'll blow my hair around. Well, that's two of eight. Nice. Uh, so now, of course, I start obsessively checking each uh, corner and, and edge of the dungeon, hoping to, and pausing there, hoping to see my wind blow. Or the, rather, my hair blow in the wind. <laughs> um... Down here, I got a little bit cocky and uh, ran into that thing, so I had to uh, use an herb to uh, refill. Got a little too close to them when they burst out of the ground, and then, uh, of course, I do it again, because, you know, something that fun has to be done twice. However, I did get a strength increase, so that was nice. And I hit the last switch in this sequence of four, which opened up the uh, stairs down here. The next area was sort of a big winding spiral, and I did take a couple of hits on the way through, so that when I got to this last worm thing, it popped out of the ground too close, I was overconfident, and it actually took me out. That cost me one of my lives and sent me back to the beginning of the area, but fortunately I'm about to roll over to a second one, so I was not too concerned about the loss. I had to walk all the way back for my grudge match, and this time, I was ready. A very valuable defense increase came from that, as well as a save point, hooray! In the save point, I uh, can refill my health and also transform into Freedam the Dark Knight, which of course I do, because he's awesome. And from there, it's time to proceed further into the mines. This area had kind of a neat, uh, almost parallax scrolling effect there with the uh, ropes overhead and the trams crossing by. I thought that was kind of cool, added a bit of depth to the scene. Uh, Freedown does a bunch more damage and only takes about a hit and a half, uh, or a circle and a half of damage from the whip attack, so that's nice. Up here I got to do a pretty fun half fight. After which I battled my way through the area and came to... Uh, this sort of back room, which for some reason I bailed out on and then decided to go through with anyway. Um, here's an obvious trap situation, so it was time to fight my way through. Here I was forced to fight two lizard men at the same time, which I feel like I handled pretty darn well. Again, it doesn't hurt that I have this extra range. And uh, finishing off the last beholder in the area, I got an HP increase and the way forward. In back, we find another save point, as well as... Oh, it looks like my hair is blowing in the breeze, and there's a hit noise there. Wonder what I'll need to do. And there you are. The ability to change back into Young Will is sort of a giveaway. We're going to have to use our Psycho Dash to clear open that uh, back wall of the cave. So we transform, head on back there, and blast it open. Now here I thought I'd make a prudent move and quickly head back to the save point to change back to Free Dan yet again, because who wants to go forward without him? But in this next room, there was only another save point, which contained a Free Dan statue. So, <laughs> not sure if that was entirely necessary, but I sure felt like I was being, you know, thoughtful while I was doing it. This room contains Freedan's new power, the Dark Friar. And, uh, it's pretty neat. The light floats in the air and then bestows itself upon me. Dark Friar can now be used. The Dark Friar is a dark power that only the Dark Knight, Freedan, can dark use. Dark use the aura power to dark scorch a dark distant enemy. Use the attack button to dark save energy. 
Well, it uh, charges up a lot like the Psycho Dash, and when released, shoots a cool fireball that mysteriously makes no noise whatsoever. Equipped with this newfound power, I headed back to the previous room and found that I had to blow up a worm across a chasm. Defense increase for me. And now I can take this sweet, sweet downward ramp. Is that a ramp? Is that, is that a thing? A downward ramp? Is that real? I don't know. Bringing me to yet another slave, or laborer, rather. There are people who are forced to work deep in the diamond mine. Please use this key to save them. You've got the elevator key. Oh, Groovy, I remember the elevator from a little while back. By my count, that's three of eight laborers saved, so it was time to head back upstairs to the elevator. But first, I had to get stuck in this stupid half pipe for a bit first. You have a lot of momentum when you come off the uh, one side of it, so it was hard to stop before heading back up the other side. It was kind of embarrassing. Hop down the ledge there. Nice little shortcut that they built in for me. And head to the elevator. I have to say, this uh, dungeon is not too terribly inspiring in terms of uh, graphic design. It's really just a lot of bland caves and uh, fences to sort of make a maze out of it. But really, aside from the neat little graphical flourishes like the ropes overhead and this part where you get to ride a tram across the... Uh, you might recognize the lower level there. There was part of the half pipe that I went through before. Um, so yeah, aside from some kind of touches like that, it's kind of a bland area. Um, I guess the enemies are neat, but even just these rocks are kind of... I feel like they could have done better. Not really sure how. Anyway, in this room I was presented with a choice. Right or left, as well as another locked gate in the middle. I decided to go to the gate, I guess. Not sure why. And then down to the left. To the morgue. Oof. Creepy. The morgue is full of uh, these ground pop-out worms. So it was a small matter to just go around the room and clean them all up. I got a valuable strength increase. And that appeared to be that. Nothing left. No items left in the room. Okay. So it was time to go right. Right side was rather a complicated maze filled with monsters. And I decided to go the easy route by just uh, tossing fireballs at them from up above where they couldn't possibly reach me. Well, actually, the whip guys maybe could, but they just decided not to try. So it was uh, kind of a small matter to defeat, like, half the enemies in the room just by charging up here and being a little bit patient. Getting into it, into the maze itself, was a lot of close quarters fighting and actually quite challenging, so I thought I'd avoid that. The last beholder gave me an HP increase, and then it was time to head around to the guy that I'd already freed by accident with my fireballs to see what he had to say. He gave me another key. You have the key to the mine. Brilliant. By my count, that is four of eight uh, laborers freed. And with my newfound key, it was time to head back upstairs and see where I could go. I equipped the rather ornate, uh, first the wrong key, and then mine key B, obtained from a laborer in the diamond mine. And I tried to use it, it made a strange sound, and it didn't open. Without both keys, the door won't open. What do you mean, both keys? This is absolutely news to me that I would need two keys. It did say mine key B, so I have to wonder that there's a mine key A somewhere, but I certainly don't have it. And uh, casting around the place, I couldn't find anything. And dear viewer, this is where I confess, I got totally stuck. Uh, I spent a bunch of time running around, I reorganized my inventory out of boredom, I went all the way back upstairs, and I've, honestly, as of this recording, I, I have I have nothing. I have, I have no idea how to go past this point. So I decided, uh, after quite a while, to uh, kind of call it a rest, or call it a day, and uh, take a rest. So at this point, I'm going to say uh, thanks for watching, and see you next mission, and I hope very much that I have some progress to show you in the next video. Otherwise, this uh, series might just stop cold. Nah, there'll, there'll be something in the next video, I promise. But I'm just not quite sure what it is yet.